I think the most logical place to start this video is my experience with muzzle brakes and where it all started. Now the first actual firearm I purchased was my Armor Light AR-10 A2. Now I had purchased firearms before that, but it was usually like somebody be like, hey, can I borrow 20 bucks? I'm like, yeah, I don't borrow money. What do you got for guns? And then I'd buy their firearms off of them. But uh, like actual gun shop purchase, you know, with a warranty and everything was an Armor Light AR-10 A2. And when I purchased it, I believe it was on the back of the owner's manual. It had their phone number right there. And I'm like, well, hey, they gave me their number. They obviously want me to call. And I did. I called a lot about a lot of different topics. One of the first times I called them, took my Armor Light AR-10 A2 to the range. And remember, <laughs> this was back then. This was before I had my truck driving weight. Like I was like 130 pounds soaking wet. So, I mean, it really rocked me. I just had a flash hider, exactly like this one right here. Go on my target, I'm like, boom! I'm like, whoa, this thing recoils. Boom! I'm like, this is ridiculous. So I call them up with their little magazine article in my hand. I'm like, beep, beep, beep. I'm like, I don't know what kind of commie propaganda you guys are trying to spread here, but this is <laughs> This magazine article is totally fabricated. It's a complete lie. It says right here, you know, for accurate, fast follow-up shots, you know, go armor light. I'm like, you cannot shoot that thing fast. I can shoot a bolt action almost as fast as that because it throws me off target so bad and it takes me a while to get back on. What's the point of having that high capacity and this really awesome looking rifle if it recoils like a hunting rifle? And then they explained to me, well, sir, you know, you're dealing with, I don't remember what it weighed at the time. It was like six, seven and a half pounds, something like that. It, I'm almost positive it was below eight pounds. And you're shooting a full-size cartridge. You're gonna have some felt recoil. I mean, we have a couple of different options here. You could go like a pneumatic buffer, but then, you know, it's gonna screw with the gun's functionality and you may lose some reliability. I'm like, no, not gonna happen. Like, or you could go with a muzzle brake. I mean, you could be looking at recoil reduction by 40%. I'm like, what? So you're telling me I could buy this little magic device and screw it on the end of my barrel and get somewhere around 40% less recoil? I'm like, if that's the case, you know, I have this really big bridge in California I'd love to sell you. Anyway, after going back and forth with them for a while, they sell me this muzzle brake. Shows up in the mail, screwed on the end of my barrel. And I'm like, boom, boom, boom. I'm like, now this is what I'm talking about. This is how the weapon's supposed to perform. So I was hooked. I'm like, yeah, go muzzle brakes. I'm like, I'm on board now. Basically how a muzzle brake works is you have two different types of recoil. You have the gases being expelled from the barrel, which gives your rifle, shotgun, pistol thrust, which pushes back on you. And then your second recoil in semi-automatics is when the slide or the inside mechanical parts come to the rear and stop at the end of the rifle, pushing it backwards. So, then I was hooked. I'm like, yeah, I'm putting a muzzle brake on everything. My shotgun, I got one with a ported barrel. I bought a muzzle brake for my handgun. And I had tried it on a lot of different things. Well, the shotgun, to be honest, I didn't really notice a difference. So I had went online because my shotgun, it's a terrible one to get actual data off of because it's got ghost ring sights, which slows you down drastically. It doesn't have a bead sight. If it was a, had a bead sight, then I could actually like have one shotgun, see how fast I could go through targets and then use that one and go through the targets. But when you shoot a shotgun with ghost ring sights because of where your head is, when it recoils, you got to realign, find your sights. A normal shotgun, you bring it up, as soon as it touches your cheek, you can discharge it because you're on target. And then you just keep your cheek on there and it stays with the rifle. But when your head's up here, the or the shotgun, when your head's up here, it allows the shotgun to move around, causing you to relook at the sights. So getting data off that shotgun with the ghost ring sights would be like asking Stephen Hawking what he thinks about his new pair of Nikes. How would I know how good the shoes are, you in the soles? First paper me, lol, was oh, J Simpson not available, you guys must have some sort of learning disability, will your string of mistakes never end, I have a good commercial for you, 
When the glove does not fit, you must buy Jensen Ivel M F A O. So anyway, I went online and they were like, yeah, brakes on shotguns, I mean, they're pretty much useless because the bore diameter is so big and there's just not enough gas coming out to be able to redirect it to have a noticeable recoil difference. I mean, I believe they worded it at something like on certain types of ammo you might notice one. And it kind of makes sense because I used to see brakes like this on shotguns constantly, like on basically all shotguns, and then they just stopped. I think eventually, you know, the test data came back and they're like, yeah, there's not much of a recoil difference. With porting the barrel, you might notice one, but it's not really so much about redirecting the gas. It's about losing velocity out of your round and seeing a uh, reduction in recoil that way. Now, handguns, I had ran a break on a 9 mil and a 45. I might have noticed a slight recoil reduction on the 9 mil. But on the 45, like uh, with the brake on there, or a compensator, there, there's two different things, a brake and a compensator, but they both achieve like the same job. So I more or less use the words interchangeably, but they don't actually mean the same thing. So it's up to you if you want to critique all that. But yeah, on the 45, if I was blindfolded and I shot five rounds with the brake, and then I shot five rounds without the brake, I would not be able to tell you the difference. I mean, I could guess but with no uh, consistent accuracy on which one is which. So I did some digging, and I found out that, yeah, they actually tried running a brake on the Thompson. But again, the 45 has such a wide diameter, and there's just not enough gases to be redirected to have a noticeable brake. But you do get a placebo effect. Basically, like, so... <coughs> you buy your pistol... Now you spend almost another $100 on a threaded barrel and then anywhere from $20 to $50 on a brake. So you have $150 worth of improvements. So you want it to perform better so badly that you actually perceive it as performing better, which is normal. nine you might get a little bit more recoil reduction because you know you still got the same pressure but it's a smaller bore so it's a little bit easier to scavenge some of the gases now a break if i can actually find where i read this from i'll post it i believe it was you want three holes to be most effective the first hole being at least 80 percent of the bore diameter the second hole being at least 60 percent of the bore diameter and the third hole being at least 20 percent of the bore diameter that's as small as you can go and still get the maximum effect effectiveness out of your brake. I mean, you could all go 100% of the bore diameter, but allegedly you're not going to gain everything, going to gain any more than if you were to just do the three holes getting smaller. So it's kind of up to you on that. So where do I stand on brakes? Well, with shotguns, I mean, they look freaking awesome. Not brakes, but the ported barrels. So I'm all for it. Whatever. I don't care if it makes a difference or not. It looks cool enough to where I want it on there. With pistols, it's a little bit different because the functionality is different. You could go ported, which that looks cool. And you are going to lower the muzzle velocity of the pistol. So you are going to feel a slight reduction in recoil, which whatever. You know, it's not that big of a deal. But putting on like a comp or a brake on this, I'm totally against it. I know that there's a bunch of reasons why on there, like on the internet, they'll go like, oh, you could have stuff lying in your face. That's another hole to get plugged, you know, whatever. None of that stuff bothers me. It's the whole fact that if I'm going to use this defensively, now as like a silencer, that's different because then my pistol's in offensive use and ideally I'd be shooting the target before it gets anywhere close to me. But on a carry gun, it might be like <laughs> I'm holding the guy by the throat trying to pump rounds into him or whatever. And just moving the slide slightly out of battery will make this not function. We're like, it's not loaded again. 
Well, like a normal pistol, you got the base of the frame and stuff. So if you were to hit it up against it, it's not really moving it out that much. I mean, it could, like if you were to hit it wrong and hit it towards the top and then pop it out of battery. But having that break on there, it sticks out farther. So instead of just having a flush base where you can hit up against, now you got that sticking out. So if you were to hit it, it's going to push it back to right there no matter what. Just because it's added on there and it gives... It gives the barrel a little bit more leverage to go out of battery. Will you notice a difference? I mean, like I said, there's a placebo effect involved and you are reducing the muzzle velocity and you are reducing gases being pushed straight out of the barrel. So you will notice some sort of difference, but unless you're running competition, I just really don't think it's worth it. Not to mention when you add that weight on the barrel, like people that run silencers will notice this, it affects the way the firearm functions and a lot of times you'll have to change all parts or polish this or whatever to make it run right. You put a compensator on the end of this, it may not run 100% reliable with several different types of ammunition. Really though, it comes down to you. But again, like my strong recommendation, unless you're running competition where you just need to get that little edge, just that little bit more speed to go faster, I wouldn't do anything but porting. And even porting, I mean, you're lowering your muzzle velocity. You're taking away kinetic energy, which pistols have little to none anyway. So, I mean, I kind of want all of it. But putting a compensator or a muzzle brake on a handgun that you're going to use self-defensively or defensively, I strongly don't recommend do it. And it's just a liability. I mean, Come on now. I mean, if you're going to your sidearm, especially if you started with a long gun, things went belly up. That's all I need is one more liability that could possibly take this down. But that's just my thoughts on it. Post in the comments what you think about it. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe.